What's up YouTube and welcome back to Homebrew Subaru. In this episode, I'm gonna get some of the safety requirements finished on the Impreza. So what's up everyone? Uh, first thing is I'm kind of like on a wired deal on the camera right now because I really overdid it on my batteries uh, filming all of the time lapses for painting the panels on the car. Uh, yeah, so I mean I might get some weird angles going on here, but anyway, uh, I'll get some new batteries. I don't want to spend a lot on these cameras, I want to upgrade at some point. Today is more safety related stuff. I want to get the wipers kind of taken care of probably the headlights all wired in uh, when I purchased this car first thing I noticed was I mean the a pillar had some damage over here uh, but it was actually the wiper coming across and it had come off its uh, post or whatever and it it actually ruined the a pillar by sweeping past it when I grabbed the wipers they're both loose and I really have no idea what's going on with the linkage, whether it's broken or the posts are both loose. I really don't know, uh, but I'm going to kind of go through it, check it all out. Uh, I do have all of the parts from the old car, which is in really good condition and I'll use what I have to. I actually grabbed the shroud from the old car, but sitting it next to this one, the newer piece is actually more sun bleached than the one that's on currently on the car so I don't know if it was replaced at some point but it is a lot darker and it'll uh, it'll clean up a lot nicer I know that so I'll, I'll go through all this stuff and then uh, we'll get working on some lights after this so you'll find most Japanese uh, wiper assemblies setups are basically the same uh, from all the manufacturers of the era this is on this shroud is basically only held on with this uh, hood insulator the rubber stripping and just these little clips going down through the front of it hold it to this little bracing piece here and popping it all off the whole front of the shroud comes loose and then the back side just has these little plastic pegs that go down in there some things may snap and break it's just the nature of the beast when working on something that's 20 years old getting down to the assembly here i got a better idea it seems to be the linkage has come loose if you can kind of see down in there how much you can see the amount of play in there all i got to do is unplug it here and there's one 10 mil here one further down here and then one on the other side of the firewall over here and i think i think it will come out after th that so i'll get it out get a better idea of what's going on and then we'll get ready to replace it so now with this out of the car i can really see where the problem is it's all in this linkage right here and you can see how much play is actually in there the bushing is so far gone that it's basically metal metal on metal and it's opened up the arms so much that uh, I mean it was obviously still doing something but yeah that's the reason that it ended up taking out the a-pillar so I will uh, at least I'll have a good good motor to take off of there because uh, this end of it's completely tight and I know the motors working uh, so I'll pop that off and keep it keep it as a spare well, little did I know up until this point, trying to install the 2005 linkage into the 2002 car, is they are different. Everything, everything at this end lines up. The connector is, you know, 180 degrees, but it does plug in. I, I would assume the motor operates the same. But over at this end, where it mounts on the onto the body, the old one mounts through the firewall and the new one must have mounted to some bracket built off of in between the firewall and I guess you know the the body of the car the secondary firewall whatever you want to call it looking at it I was like well can I get this piece and put it on the other and I was like it's just not gonna happen nothing like that's gonna happen 
So I'm going to kind of stick this back into the car because it does kind of bolt up at this end and just see if there's anything I can bother trying to do at this end. I've already looked online. I can get a replacement. I actually couldn't get a replacement a few months ago, but I can get one now at a good price. So I don't know. I'll put this in the car and see what it looks like, see if I can imagine something. And if I can't, then I'll just have to uh, order a new one. Now, as you can see with the transmission in there and the cowling back in place, it's really close. I, I, I think it would work, but is that it's pretty much right up against this and it's not going to mount to it flush. The bushing is going to be off center. I have it just stuck up with that block right now and it's going to ride up against the body. It's going to make noise. You know, it's just not something I should be doing. And for the for the cost that I can get a new transmission, uh, that's that's just what I'm going to have to do. So, I've got one on order. So I guess while we wait for the replacement wiper transmission to get here, we'll jump into the wiring on the headlights and get them installed. Still have the connectors for the bug eye lights connected, and it's just these the one headlight connector and the turn signal kind of park light and then that little corner light on the side here i already have all of the uh, light connections for the blah by ready to go and it's just a matter of getting all the connections made and from what i can see by looking at this wiring diagram or i guess both of them that the one headlight the wiring from it needs to be spliced into both lights for the blah by so one connection gets split and then the other connections just go to those lights and everything should work at that point but realistically i'm going to have to just uh kind of look at the diagrams and wire up everything before soldering i'm gonna have to turn on the lights and just make sure that i've got everything good to go Subaru's actually made it very simple. Uh, the wiring colors are basically the same. So this is the old headlight connection for the bug eye. And you can see there's a yellow and red and a red with blue and just a solid red. And the two headlight connections, high and low beam for the blob eye, basically have all the same wiring colors, but the red with blue, you just splice that together uh, it's no extra load on the circuit because it's only only going to use one of those uh, connections at a time. And basically putting that, well, like this. So uh, red to solid red and red and blue to red and blue and yellow to red. And that's going to solve the headlights really easy. The, the wiring colors will be different on the other side, but basically the exact same thing. That's how you wire up the headlights from bug eye to blob eye. Now, as for the turn signal and a uh, little park light, uh, it's a little different because, well, for one, the little corner light on the outside here, uh, you've got to stick that wiring through and it's a, uh, a red with yellow and a black. And then the, uh, the turn signal connection on the bug eye is a black, the red and yellow and a black with green tracer so the way i've looked at it i haven't even brought up a wiring diagram but just looking at the connections on the on the uh, blah by light i was able to determine that you can just basically splice these two grounds together uh, the two uh, you know corner light connections together putting this uh, lighter green with black tracer to that wire and the red and yellow to the red and yellows and the black to black that should just plug into the blah by light and work so uh, let's get everything kind of connected and see what it looks like okay so i've got the headlight all temporarily wired up there i'll just turn on the park light and the headlight damn that's bright high beam and then turn signal but that is actually a bulb 
turn signal. It, uh, when I had the LED in there, it flashes quickly. I had LEDs in both front and rear on the blah by and they worked fine without any resistors or anything. I did pop in one of the resistors that I had and it didn't do anything. So I'm not sure what I'm going to do to get the LEDs to work or if I'm just going to put some brand new amber bulbs in for now, but everything works. I'm ready to solder everything together. So it's actually just a few days later. I left the house for a little bit and I came home and this was sitting on my front step. So this is the wiper transmission for the car. The box is a little bit mangled and lots of extra tape. So I better have a good, really good look at it before I get it like the motor on it and back in the car, if you know what I mean. Find out that it's missing something or something's cracked or broken. Uh, so I'll whip it out of the box, get the motor on it and we will get it back into the hole. So I have the old wiper motor off of the old wiper transmission and I've gone to put it onto the new replacement transmission and I can see why someone else has re returned this but the holes that actually mount it there's one that's just slightly off and there's a little lip on the bottom of this that kind of prevents things from lining up. So I'm going to probably walk the round file or possibly even the drill uh, through that just a tiny little bit just so those will line up a little better and the uh, bolts can can draw the motor tight up against this bracket. And that's all that really needs to happen here. So here you can see I've got the motor on the replacement transmission. Uh, there was a little bit more screwing around that I had to do than I, I thought I would. I definitely had to open up this hole a little bit this way and then as I got the motor sitting in place I realized that the bracket seemed to be misformed a little bit because it didn't appear to be bent anywhere so I kind of had to put it in the vise just about here and then start bending that bracket down. Uh, the motor was pretty much there but that little lip on the inside it was also preventing the motor from sitting nice and flush so I ground it down a little bit and now I have everything installed it should work fine I not until I get it into the car will I see if this bracket's out of alignment at all and so I might need to get a little bit more tweak and that's where I'm going next I can totally see why someone would return something like this uh, you know who has the time to try and figure out that and literally do they have the tools uh, to start screwing around and modifying something without any knowledge of doing so you know, you kind of buy something like this, it's because you just want to bolt on your new motor and put it in your car and make your wipers work. You don't want to have to screw around for half a day trying to figure out what's going on. Doesn't take me that long. I fucked around with this kind of shit my whole life. Uh, maybe about 10 minutes and I've had this thing bolted on and ready to go. So I'm going to sit in the car and see if everything lines up and then we will get everything else together. Okay, so I have the motor and linkage assembly all reinstalled it's all tightened up there's no interference from what I can tell anywhere all the bolts lined up okay you get a little extra room with this bottom one and that may be why those brackets aren't perfect I'm not quite sure I have electrical power uh, plugged in and I'm just gonna give some battery power so that I can operate it make sure that they're working properly and then uh, go about putting everything else together and there you can see it's operating on the high intermittent setting. The posts are coming to a full sweep and stopping. So I'm ready to put everything back together. So there I have the shroud back in place. I cleaned it up really nice before putting it back on. I have the uh, painted wiper arms back on. Uh, these were done in like a satin black. So not full gloss, but they do have a kind of a shiny finish to them. And I've got some cheapo replacement uh, wiper blades from our uh, world-renowned Canadian tire that I'm going to throw on there. And I'm going to put the blades on first. And that way I can get them positioned right on the windshield where I want. And then I'll go ahead and tighten up the rest of them. Once everything's together, we'll double check operation with the wipers actually sweeping the windshield. So I have the blades installed and lined up. And the arms are all tightened on. 
I did run it quickly, but I'll uh, spray some more some more water on there and we'll give them a try. We got working wipers that aren't going to take out this A-pillar, if you know what I mean. So I'm really glad that I took the time to discover what was going on with the wiper transmission in this car, figuring out that the 2005 wiper transmission wasn't going to work, and then ordering the new one and getting it installed. It's saved me a headache further down the road for sure. Uh, you know, going to drive the car and figuring out the wipers don't work properly in one of the rainiest places you can be. And because it was a few days waiting for that wiper transmission to come, I just decided I want those LED signals to work properly. So I went ahead and ordered some, some more resistors. So I, you know, if I have to do the rear as well, then I will. I do have LED bulbs in those uh, crystal lenses for the rear. I'm not sure where exactly I'm going next. I, I really think that I should be uh, cleaning up the body on the car before I get the rest of the panels on. That way I don't have like buffing compound all over everything. Um, just makes more sense to me. So that may be the next video. If you like this video, definitely give it a thumbs up. And if you're new here and you haven't already, please consider hitting that subscribe button for me. I'll leave your questions and comments further down below. And I'll see you in the next one.